Hello again. Uh, one of the subjects that comes up a lot, people that want to know what they can use for wires to make loop bales in their microwaved glass pendants. And uh, there's usually a real cut and dried answer, high temperature wire, fuse it between the glass. But there are other options, as well as the, the high temperature wire. The high temperature wire is the best because it doesn't anneal in the heat. It'll stay strong. But uh, it's it's easy to come by, it's easy to use, and it's generally everybody's first choice. And this is called stamen wire. It's used for porcelain flowers in ceramic work. And you can you don't need to look in a glass shop. If you don't have a glass shop, you can look in any ceramic supply store or a lot of online craft stores with just general merchandise will carry stamen wire. This one is 0 0.020 diameter. But you just clip off a little piece of that, like that. And someplace here. I'm always doing this stuff spontaneously as I suddenly think I want to do, talk to you and then I don't have anything around, I'm not prepared. Uh, I use a round nose plier so it makes a nice round loop. You just fold it over and I like to turn my ends back into a little curl because Conceivably, the straight wire can pull out of the glass, but if you make a little loop on the end, it locks into the glass and it won't pull out. I don't make a full circle the other way because a lot of times if you make a full circle inside of the glass, oh, like in a ring shape, like, oh, say a ring shape like that, you'll get a big air bubble in there. So that's the stamen wire. It comes in different uh, thicknesses. This one's from Kemper. Much thicker. High temp wire. And it's the same thing. It's just a little bit thicker to handle. and It's a nice sturdy wire if you wanted to make loops to hang heavier pieces of glass and wind shines and such. And it's the same thing, you cut off the length you want and it bends easily with any kind of scissors. Scissors, yeah. <laughs> any kind of pliers. And you could make a, a fancier, bigger loop or something like that if you wanted to make a hanging. The easiest... Okay, where are they? If you want to cut out half the work, you can buy these fusible, fusible high temperature jump rings. And those are all pre cut and pre bent, and you can use them just as they are. And first, you got to get them out of the package. It's really freezing in here, and my hands aren't working. <laughs> very, very cold. Okay. There we go. They're pre-cut, pre-bent. They have a nice round curve in them. I like to tighten them up a little bit and then straighten out the ends so that it's a little bit closer curve like that. A lot of times I'll cut the ends off because they're just way too long for what I want to do most of the time for pendants. But then I, again, curl up the ends so that they lock into the glass. And you can make a pretty little curve there if it's going to show it all, but again, I try not to make a closed loop because it does create a little bubble. So that's the standard and the, the best things for making your loops, but you can also use things that are a lot easier to come by, like uh, copper wire. This is, I don't know, maybe 24 gauge copper. It's real thin. You can make some real pretty little 
delicate loops with this and curl the little ends and you can make swirlier ends and I use this to make uh, double loops like I don't have one. Oh wait here this doesn't show up good even looking at it with the bare eye it probably doesn't show in the camera to make a a two-point hanger for like the goldfish bowl I use a straight piece of wire and uh, find everything in reach here make it you know, the loop and straight and then the loop again and embed this whole thing in the, in the glass the thing with copper is that it does anneal in the heat of the kiln so it gets very soft and it makes a very weak loop when you take it out of the kiln uh, you can just work it real real gentle with a pair of forceps or pliers or something and just almost imperceptibly impercept, blah, blah, imperceptibly wiggle it just wiggle it rub it a little bit and it'll start to harden up a little bit more and it's sturdy enough for most applications especially if you're going to have like a something hang to hang in a window or ornament or something like that such as that uh, another thing you can do with the, the thin copper is make shapes hammer it down then you could use it almost like a cloisonne or other whatever designs and like a design like this I would put right on the top of a piece of glass and put little frit balls or something inside anyway that's you could uh, this is thin enough wire hammer it a little bit so it's nice and flat and you can use it as an inclusion in between your pieces of glass and there's heavier wires uh, right here handy I just happen to have 16 gauge and that's actually one of my favorite gauges because it's really versatile and you can hammer it down you can make a real pretty hook it just it bends really really easily and oops I'm sorry I went right out of camera range with that didn't it? you could even make little S hooks and I usually uh, let's see what have I got here Stuff like this I'll usually hammer flat a little bit. Hold your ears. It's just easier to embed in the glass and hold it steady if you hammer it down a little. What did I oh here wait a minute here? You can do like an ornament hook like this. Just a, a fancier shape that's just a kind of a random scrap piece. But again, you'd hammer it, hammer it flatter. You can hammer it a lot flatter than that. You can hammer it right down into like a a real thin sheet, and it makes it a little bit easier to hold it in the glass. Uh, let's see here, little swirly things. With this too, if you hammer it down small enough, you can use it as an inclusion inside the glass as well. Uh, then we have stainless steel. Uh, somewhere around here. Where is it? Anyways, I have a, a package of stainless steel suture wire, which is something you would be able to find through medical supply or probably even eBay or something. Oh, here's a piece. Here's a piece I was using earlier. I love this stuff. This is my favorite. It's stainless steel. It's very thin. It's the same wire that they would use if you had surgery and they had to wire your bones together or your jaw shut or some such thing as that. And it's very easy to bend. It's it doesn't have a lot of bounce back springiness, so it holds the bend, it holds the shape. I love using this for wire wrapping jewelry as well because it's stainless steel, it doesn't tarnish, it keeps a bright silver look. 
but this makes fantastic fired in loops and veils. But if you're wanting to do something really quick and you're not up to a trip to the store, there's stainless steel around your house too. There's rust proof stainless steel paper clips. These are a little harder to handle. They're brittle usually, but they still nip apart fairly easy. You just nip off the loop and again I would curl the ends out, which is not as easy as the suture wire or the nichrome, but if your hands are a little bit warmer than mine are and are functioning, it's not too bad. But that's a really sturdy loop. Very nice. And some of you might have little stainless steel jewelry jewelry grade safety pins. Again, oops, nip, nip. Snip off the ends, curl them up. These are really delicate and thin, so they they work really easy. And I kind of like them because they end up with a little eyelet on the top. It's a very nice, neat looking eyelet. You can pinch them back. These are a little bit springy because um, they're supposed to be. <laughs> and a very nice, neat little eyelet. I think there was something else. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Wait a minute. This is a flat ribbon of nichrome. And this is free. Well, almost free because it's recycled. And I love this stuff too. You can nip off a little piece of the ribbon like this. Well, it's also kind of tough. <laughs> but, um, and make the little loop in it. It bends very easily. But then you have a rather thick piece. So I like to twist the ends. So, yeah, where are you? Okay, there it is. <laughs> I like to twist the ends a little bit so they're flat, like twisting a ribbon. Just like one of the multitude of disease ribbons that are out there. Just twist it into a little flat little shape like that. And then the ends are flat. And ready to embed in your glass. So that's just a few things that you might have around the house. Oh, did I forget to tell you where this comes from? This nichrome ribbon is from an old toaster. So if you have a toaster that dies, save it because oh it's full it's it's right full of good stuff. There's usually little grates in there that are stainless steel. And you can use them for all kinds of kiln type stuff as little feet and legs and stands and also I'm getting off subject here with the bale wire. But the inside of the toaster is full of panels of, oops, they're flaking apart. This is mica. This is pure, natural mica. And that's the insulation, insulating layer inside of your toaster. And it flakes apart into, oh, numerous thin little flakes. You can flake it down as far as you want. And if you want to, you can even rub it and end up with little sparkles. I love that stuff. One toaster, one four slice toaster, <laughs> and you end up with loads of this flat ribbon wire and loads of mica. Let's see, is there anything else here I wanted to touch on with this subject? Oh, I didn't get any already done stuff here to show you. Uh, you can kind of see the background. You can see the, the little ends of the wire in this. You can Okay, we talk about actually doing it. You can put them under the glass and nine times out of ten the glass will melt down in good enough to hold it. 
I'm never that confident in it, so a lot of times I'll put a little piece of the real, real thin confetti glass. I'll put a piece of that down, and I'll put the bale on top of it, and then the glass on top of that. A lot of times I'll use a little bit of glue. I love the little one drop super glue just because it's really fast and I'm not patient and it holds really, really well. By the time you hold something down for a second and let go and it's, and I do that right on the paper, right on the kiln paper. So it's glued right on there and then I transfer the whole piece of kiln paper over to the kiln. Uh, see this one you can see a little further. You can also put a little pile of frit down and lay the loop right on the, the little pile of frit. Add a little drop of glue or add a little drop of glue on the frit and then on the wire and then lay the glass right on top of it that way. Or if you're starting from you're building a pendant from the bottom up. Uh, let's see what I can find here. Of course everything's over in the other bench. Okay, uh, you have your base piece of glass. You put your loop on. I usually find a little scrap piece just to hold it level while I'm working and position it where I want. I would put the drop, okay, I'm not going to put this one on there, but I would put the drop of super glue on the wire. Let it sit for a second just to hold everything steady. And then put my piece of glass, another little drop of glue, put my piece of glass on it there, and fire. And then it would be fired in between two layers of glass. Uh, this is fired in between two layers. You probably can't see it. This is a, a failed Christmas tree. Uh, let's see, do I have another one here? Oh, here's, here's an example of some... This is the real fine wire. This, I don't know if this is the 24 gauge or if it's actually out of a, could be out of a piece of a household electrical wire or something. I don't know. I do a lot of recycling. Everything I do is about recycling and reusing things. And anyway, this is a little bird and his legs and the loop on top are all one continuous piece. It's a couple strands of the copper wire twisted tight. And he was just fired directly down on top of the wire. And you can see it did go down in. You can also see that the copper wire had a chemical reaction with the sulfur bearing yellow glass. A lot of gl yellow glass is sulfur bearing. And the copper caused it to change color. Which, nine times out of ten, is something I'm doing on purpose. This time I wasn't thinking about it and it just did it. <laughs> But, but the the wire was just laid right on the kiln paper. The glass laid on top of it and fired like that. And, uh, usually I'm, I cut the paper into smaller pieces, four, and then a circle to fit on the base of the kiln. And I'll assemble it. I'll do all the assembly right on the paper, glue and all. And then I just pick up the paper and put it on the base of my kiln. This is one of my really beat up old kilns. This is a piece of silk mat that I made a, a new bottom to smooth out the base of the kiln. So that's another little tidbit of information there. Uh, let's see, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover about little loops. So go make some little loops. Catch you next time.